Bone Shatter Slayer is the premier League Start Melee Map Blaster. This build is a staple in SSF ladder pushing, with its ease of setup and quick gameplay making it one of the fastest. With the recent changes with alt qualities and Divergent Bone Shatter potentially no longer being an option to scale with Jug, Slayer is my new de facto Bone Zone King. I will still have the max roll up for Jug, as some people really prefer the beef, but I probably won't release a YouTube guide for it unless they announce Divergence back. Smash some skulls with Bone Shatter, a melee ability with built-in explosions which got a small buff this league in the quality changes. Bone Shatter gives a stack of trauma, making you deal and take more damage for every stack, every time you get one. This stacking trauma damage isn't an issue when combined with Slayer's huge recovery from Overleech. This build is great for blasting maps and cracking skulls, but is weak on bossing. It's not so bad where you won't be able to do your Void Stones, but the last two will take more gearing and practice than on other builds. While mapping, you'll leap around with Leap Slam, stopping to obliterate packs, and when they're not instantly destroyed, you'll slam your totems down, use your War Banner for Adrenaline, and pop Berserk for an insane boost of damage to make quick work of them. For bossing, you'll do the same as you would with tanky rares in maps, except you won't use Berserk on pinnacle bosses. Instead, you'll opt to keep the passive rage bonus, which provides more damage in the long run. On pinnacle bosses, make sure you swap Warlord Mark out of your cast when damage taken setup and slot in a low level vulnerability to boost your damage, since we won't be stunning and therefore not generating rage on pinnacle bosses using Warlord Mark. We scale our damage through obtaining accuracy on gear and specking into precise technique, which gives us 40% more damage if our accuracy is higher than our life. Since Slayer has Overleech, we also take advantage of the damage while leeching crafts. Alongside this, we'll use a huge Fizz Axe, and with all of our utility and the Slayer Ascendancy, we make quick work of most of the monsters in the game. For your normal lab, you'll take Impact, providing you extra strike range to have a comfortable strike skill playstyle, some accuracy, area of effect, and 15% more damage if you're close to your enemy. In Cruel Lab, you'll take Bane of Legends to deal 20% more damage against unique enemies, and 10% more if you've killed recently. In Merc Lab, you'll take Brutal Fervor, providing you with Overleech and doubling your base leech top of the 10% reduced damage taken while leeching. And lastly, for Uber Lab, you'll take the Slayer Famous 20% Culling Strike, providing an extra attack and boost speed boost on top. Hey, mother... You made it this far, okay? Click that sub button and say nice build in the comment section. Or I'm going to get four divines from Tujin before you get 10 chaos on League Start. Also, if you're a console player or just prefer the written guides with the step-by-step -step crafting, leveling, and gear progression, make sure you go and check out that new max roll tool. While leveling this build, you must take advantage of the Rustic Sash recipe. Vendor of Magic or Rare Rustic Sash, a Blacksmith Whetstone, and the highest level two-hand axe you can find. Do this every time you find a higher level axe base that looks like one of these. We level this build as Spectral Throw until around level 44, where you can swap to Bone Shatter. Honestly, I prefer leveling as Spectral Helix, but not everybody likes that playstyle, so feel free to choose which one you prefer with Helix being unlocked at level 12. In Act 1, use Spectral Throw with Chance to Bleed and Volley, picking up Ancestral Protector, War Banner, Dash, and swapping Dash later on for Leaf Slam at level 10. In Act 2, pick up Herald of Ash and Purity, Blood Rage, and Poacher's Mark. In Act 3, you could start using Determination to get a little bit beefier. Once you reach level 44, you should be ready to swap to Bone Shatter, Ruthless, Close Combat, and Fortify. Making sure to have a Cast when Damage Taken, Molten Shell, and Warlord Mark set up all at level 1. 
Now, you simply blast on with Bone Shatter, making upgrades and preparing for maps. Some great early uniques are the Elevore Helmets for Suppression and Recovery on Suppress, Worm Sign for its Rampage, and Death Rush for its Adrenaline and Life on Kill giving a huge boost in clear speed and letting you save your banner placements only for the map boss. Your early game gear is super basic. Simply grab a despot axe base and use a few essences of contempt on it, finishing it with an attack speed or fizz craft, whichever one you didn't hit. Get a Corel Unveil Fizz Taken as Fire mod on your helmet. Craft the damage while leeching on your amulet and gloves, assuming you're using rare gloves. And fill everything else with resistances and suppression where possible. The cheapest and most impactful part of gearing is making sure you have the correct flasks. Use the first alterations you get to roll on a jade, quicksilver, granite, and quartz for evasion, armor, attack speed, and reduced effect of curses. For your skills, you'll use Bone Shatter, linked to Ruthless, Fortify, Close Combat, Brutality, and Melee Fizz. In your weapon, you only need a 3 link for your Leap Slam, Master Attacks, and Life Tap, leaving Berserk and Blood Rage in the other unlinked sockets. Your auras are Determination, Pride, and War Banner, with Frost Blink placed in an empty socket. Your totem setup is an Ancestral War Chief and Protector, Maim, and multiple totems. With your final 4 link, having your Castwind Damage Taken, Molten Shell, and Warlord Mark all at level 1 and using Ancestral Cry on left mouse button. Your tree is super generic, taking the two hand and axe nodes, life and summon pale chance, and reaching over to resolute technique and back to the right a bit for Vol Pact now that you have your overleech. In the mid game, your gear will focus on the same crafts as before, but you'll add in more resistance and suppression everywhere you can, making sure to obtain enough accuracy now to enable the use of precise technique for a ton of damage. Make sure to obtain the reduced mana cost of attacks and fizz taken as fire implicit on your helmet, determination and generic aura in fact implicit on your body armor, skills target an additional nearby enemy and impale chance on your gloves, and the minus mana cost. Elrion Unveil on one of your rings. Your skills will remain the same, but you'll now six socket your weapon or body, whichever your bone shatter setup is not in, and you'll remove maim from your totem setup, which will free up enough room for an arrogance precision setup to help assist with your accuracy needs. Now that you'll be in red maps, you need suppression chance, so we're reaching out to the right side to grab precise technique and some suppression and evasion nodes and mastery to help cap our chance out. The end game gear is taking all the concepts of the previous sets and cranking up the tier and density of the suppression, resistance, and accuracy mods that your build needs, while making sure to have all the correct implicits and unveiled crafts. If you need any crafting instructions, please Head over to my Maxwell article where I've written them out and Sushi has created crafting guides which will give you step-by-step -step instructions. Otherwise, the only difficult craft is the Onslaught Body Armor which you'll Essence Spam of Insanity on until you obtain a Suppression or Physical Damage Reduction roll. You'll then Eldritch Craft your prefixes for Evasion and Armor, finishing with the Gravitious Unveil and taking the Life Mastery for no life since you have no life on your body armor. Your Bone Shatter links are the same, will be upgraded to Awaken Melee Fizz and Brutality. Make sure to increase or decrease your precision levels based on what you need to have more accuracy than life for PT. The end game tree will reach now into the Marauder start to take some max resistance and extra life nodes to ensure we're a little beefier now that we obtained so much damage from our gear and passive tree. Some further upgrades to the build would be to follow Karn's Painted Pack setup, which I'll link down below when he's finished with it and has uploaded his video. It's a great way to scale Bone Shatter Slayer into the endgame, 
and become a near immortal build with how much recovery you can obtain. So make sure you go show the OG Boner Brother some love. Anyways, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe and suck my balls. Most people don't make it this far, so I get to say out-of-pocket shit like that and nobody will know. Our little secret.